For over 70 years after its discovery in 1930, it was classified as a bona fide planet. But in 2005, astronomers discovered a new spherical object, Eris. It's more massive than Pluto and orbits out past Neptune. If we call Pluto a planet, then what do we call Eris? Is Eris a planet? If we find more objects like this, are they planets too? And so the discovery of Eris by Mike Brown and his team wound up kicking off this whole idea of defining what a planet is. And there were suggestions that everything round should be a planet, which again is kind of a crazy idea. We kind of got over that the day that we looked up, saw the moon, and decided it wasn't a planet. You know, all round things in the solar system we don't think of as planets. And so it really took stepping back and thinking with fresh brain, like, okay, what is special about things in the solar system? How do we classify them? Astronomers rewrote the rule book and invented a new term for these tiny worlds, dwarf planets. So far, we've only identified six. Five of them, Pluto with its moon Charon, red-colored Sedna, bright distant Eris, Make Make, and bean-shaped Haumea live billions of miles from the sun, out beyond Neptune in the Kuiper Belt. They're just the tip of the iceberg. There are probably many, many more dwarf worlds that are out there waiting to be discovered. The sixth dwarf planet, Cirrus, lives in the inner solar system. It orbits around 260 million miles from Earth in the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt is a region of the solar system between Mars and Jupiter, and this is where most of the asteroids are. This is rubble left over from the formation of the solar system. In the early years of the solar system, small rocks collided with one another, stuck together, and built the rocky inner planets. Dwarf planets grew in the same way. Ceres was actually starting to get pretty big. It was on its way to becoming a planet before it stopped growing, and that makes it stand head and shoulders above everything else there. So why is Cirrus called a dwarf planet, not a planet? To be a planet, it must tick off three cosmic boxes. First, it needs to be a sphere. Second, it needs to orbit the sun and not another body. Third, it needs to clear its orbital area of orbital debris. Cirrus ticks off just two of the boxes. It's a sphere, but a small one, only 600 miles across. That's the size of Texas. It orbits the sun, but it hasn't cleared its path of debris. It's surrounded by asteroids, so it misses out on being a planet. Even though we call these objects dwarf planets, Small and dwarf does not equal insignificant. But being small does have its problems. When the molten core of a young dwarf planet cools, so does the heat engine that drives geologic activity. In Ceres, we thought would basically be a big dead rock. It's a small body, it should have cooled off long ago. Nothing very interesting is going on. And when we actually got out to Ceres, nothing could have been further from the truth. March 2015, NASA's Dawn probe arrives at Ceres. As the Dawn spacecraft pulled up to Ceres, we saw the craters and the surface that we expected to see. And then all of a sudden, something totally mysterious rotated into view. One of the craters had two bright spots, almost like two eyes staring right back at us. It was such a puzzle to the science community because what are these doing here? Are they ice? It looks very fresh. What on earth could it be? Scientists find over 100 of these mysterious white spots, 
The largest is in a 50-mile wide crater called Akatur. They are unexpectedly made up of a substance we find on Earth, sodium carbonate, a kind of salt. We believe the salts on Ceres are actually very young. We think they're as young as four million years old, and that's basically like yesterday in terms of geology. And that is super weird, right? That's happening not on sort of a geologic era, it's happening now, today. What could cause patches of salt on a world long presumed dead? Planetary geologist Janie Radabaugh believes a clue might be found at Mono Lake in California. All right, I'm here looking at this beautiful lake off in the distance and standing on massive white deposits. These white deposits used to be a part of this lake at one point. The lake had dissolved a lot of the materials in it and then as it receded, it left behind the materials as it evaporated away. And these things are, you know, salts. They're kind of granular in texture. And uh, just to make sure we taste it and yeah, sure enough, it's salty. The salt at Lake Mono crystallizes as the water evaporates, the only way it can form. The researchers believe the same process is taking place on Cirrus. This means there must be liquid water beneath the surface. But how, out in the deep freeze of the asteroid belt? These bright spots are located in the centers of craters. They're located around cracks in the surface. And that is telling us that this material is coming from under the surface and welling up onto it. Absolutely nobody expected there to be liquid water beneath the surface of Ceres. We cannot explain what is keeping that water warm. On some moons, gravitational tugging keeps the interiors warm, but Ceres is not really near anything else that's very large. So the amazing thing is that we may not even understand how rocky planets work. There may be another source of energy, another mechanism for heating the interior that we haven't even discovered yet. To find out how Ceres has liquid water, we must rewind the clock 4.6 billion years. Debris left over from the formation of the sun slams together to form the dwarf planets. As they take shape, the heavier rocky material sinks to the center and forms a hot, molten core. Slushy water ice floats to the top. For a while, it stays liquid, but once the core cools, it freezes and forms the solid mantle and crust. That surface should still be solid now, so the salt patches remain a perplexing mystery. We still haven't answered the question, how could there actually still be liquid water on Ceres? That's still a hard question to answer. Um, one way this could happen is if, if it's not actually pure water, if you've mixed it with something else. Some scientists have proposed that a salty ocean lies beneath the surface. The high concentration of salt lowers the freezing point of the water, keeping it liquid. When asteroid impacts fracture the crust, this salty water oozes up from below. The liquid swiftly evaporates and the salt remains, leaving a brilliant white spot on the surface. In fact, I'm willing to bet there could be water coming up now, bringing salts up to the surface, evaporating away into space, and that means liquid water is very close to the surface of Ceres right now.